Good morning, good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends. Almost happy Thanksgiving for all of us. We are so thankful to the Lord for all the blessings that he has given us. What a beautiful day indeed to be worshiping and honoring our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we approach God's throne of grace, let us prepare our hearts, our minds as we learn together, as we continue to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, still on our theme for this month, stewardship of gratitude. And today, let us listen to King David, the psalmist, on how gracefully he expressed his gratitude to the Heavenly Father. May I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Psalm, chapter 116, verses 1 to 9, and then on to verses 17 to 19. Psalm, chapter 116, verses 1 to 9, and then on to 17 to 19. This is the word of the Lord. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. When I was in great need, He saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 17, I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst. O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the blessings that you have given us, for all those good things and even sometimes bad things that happen to us that you have allowed for us to experience. And Father, with King David today, we want to offer our great thanksgiving, our gratitude to you for the goodness that you have shown to each of our lives. In fact, Lord, we thank you so much for this time that we can gather together to honor, worship, and allow you to control our time, to control our lives, to control our mind, so that it will be focused unto you today. Father God, as we prepare for the celebrations that we will have, thanksgiving, thank you for reminding us that as Christians, as your children, as your people, Thanksgiving is not only a one-day event in the year, but every day of our lives, we should express our thankfulness to you because you are great, you are good, and you love us. Help us today to know you more, to know your will upon our lives, to follow your plans, and to know your perspective. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Praise God for this wonderful time that you have, that we have together as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I remember a story about a young man who was an organist in a big church. He was a fine musician, but being blind was unable to see the faces of those people who really appreciated the music appreciated the way he put his fingers on the organ or on the piano. His touch on the keyboard sent out through its great pipes the songs of his soul that many really, really like that 
allow them to worship God, to prepare them with their experience in honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. People would talk to each other about the beauty and the uplifting influence of the music that ushered them to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Often, his music sent tears down the furrowed cheeks of the church members. But no one ever thought to tell the organist, to tell this young musician who was longing to hear a word of response, a word of appreciation, a word of gratitude. One morning after the worship service, it was announced that this young man will not be the organist anymore. He would not play at the worship service the following Sundays. He resigned. His decision was final. And then the pastor said, another organist must be secured. After the worship service, a woman who had enjoyed his music thoroughly went up to him and said very earnestly, I am sorry. I heard that you will not play for us anymore. That we will miss the music. That we will miss the organ playing by your magic hands. I have enjoyed your music so much. It helped me greatly. And then the, the woman father said, It comes my spirit and comforted me when I'm sad and needed to be close to the Lord during our worship services. I have thought many times, I would tell you what an inspiration I receive through the music, through you. I thank you for doing that every Sunday. The young man's voice faltered and tears rushed into his sightless eyes. As he whispered to the woman, why didn't you tell me sooner? You know, I needed comfort and inspiration too. Because as we worship the Lord, we want also to glorify Him. But it seems that nothing actually is good happening. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, when you want to say thank you, Lord, say it immediately. Don't wait until the time Thanksgiving Day comes. When you want to appreciate someone, tell him, tell them that you appreciated them now. The psalmist David wrote this psalm in the background of his experience a background of an experience of a severe trial in life. Maybe a sickness or some other situation of danger. Having been delivered without delay, he then gave thanksgiving for what the Lord had done and made promises of what he would do in gratitude of what God did to his life. The deliverance that he experienced, he wants to greatly say to God, Thank you, Lord, for all of this. And today, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want to tell you that an attitude of gratitude shows that one person is mature while in gratitude or not willing to express thankfulness. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's called the chiefest sin of all. When you receive all these blessings from God and you just don't express your gratitude to Him for all the things that He gave you, brothers and sisters in the Lord, you miss the point. Gratitude is what always spoils life when it is left out. A thankful spirit enables one person to praise God even when circumstances are difficult. 
We all have experienced that. In almost two years, it was a difficult time for the families. It was a difficult time for those people in the church. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, today, on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, let us all reflect on the many goodnesses of God and examine our hearts to see the quantity and the quality of our gratitude to Him. Maybe to some, remembering all those things that happened, all those experiences that we had, maybe we will say, it's hard for me to say thank you, Lord, because my loved one passed away, because all those things that I have are gone. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, you still have the life that God has entrusted to you. You still have the family that is close to you. Express your thanksgiving to him. Let us look at the psalmist David, who said he would do in appreciation for all the Lord had done to him and for him. And let's all together learn and then apply them into our lives and day-to-day -day living. King David expresses his gratitude to God in addition to those all things that God allowed him to experience. Let us apply these verses into our own personal lives. What are those things spiritually that King David received from God which is common to all of us? Three things that I want to share. Three experiences that I want to share with you today. Number one, brothers and sisters in the Lord, with regards to gratefulness, we should be thankful to God for our salvation from the Lord. For our salvation from the Lord. In verses 3 and 4, the cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save me. God is so good. God is so gracious in each of our lives. Let's take the cup. Let's take the cup of salvation. Because until we have seen ourselves and our minds are bothered with guilt of sin, and have surrendered our lives to our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we begin at no beginning and work toward no conclusion in developing our lives. Only after we acknowledge the Lordship and the power of Jesus Christ in our lives, then we will be able to express appreciation of how He saved us from our sins. God has given us the greatest gift of all. His son Jesus Christ. Who offered himself as a lamb to die on the cross. Then rose again on the third day. So that we can know him personally. And spend eternity with him in heaven tomorrow. Spend eternity in heaven with him next year. When God calls us home to be with him. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. As Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15. Praise be to the Lord for his goodness. Now the Bible tells us that we are separated from God. And the only way for us to be connected or reconnected to him is through his son Jesus Christ. Because the reason disconnected us by sin or the sin disconnected us from God, and only the Lord Jesus Christ can make that happen again. God loves you. God loves us. God loves me. And He wants us to be a part of His family forever. We should not let a day go without thanking God for His mercy and His grace to us in the Lord Jesus Christ until we become a child of God, until we become born again, until we become children of the Most High, we do not have the inner 
working of the Holy Spirit to give us the strength when difficult life comes, when the difficult situation in life comes. Trusting Jesus Christ as Savior and becoming a disciple of our Lord does not mean that we will automatically have all the answers when this difficult situation comes. Trust in the Lord. The Apostle Paul taught us that it is the goodness of God that leads us to accepting that we are sinners, repenting from that sin, and then we become a child of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, he said, I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to protect what I have entrusted to him until the day. Apostle Paul encouraging young Timothy to continue to hold on his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who saved him from sin and destined him to heaven. Number two, brothers and sisters in the Lord, when we think of thankfulness and we think about thanksgiving, be grateful for God's purpose in your life. Be grateful for God's purpose in your life. If you read verse 8 to 9, you can say that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will be your servant forever. Now, walking with the Lord forever in the land of the living, which is what we are doing right now. But that can only happen. When we allowed God to work in our lives, when we allowed God to live in us, so that we will be able to know His will, His purpose in our day-to-day -day living. As the psalmist thought about this great deliverance, he probably realized that his life had been lengthened in order that he might fulfill God's purposes of his life. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we know it is not an easy life. It is not a promise of a happy, good, lucky life when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. But whenever we experience sadness, when we have experienced difficulties, our situation is better than those who have not have Christ in their hearts because we know that Jesus cares. Someone said years ago, God keeps us here on earth until one of two things happens. Either we realize for which he placed us here, or we show him one final time that we have no intention of fulfilling his plans for our lives. Do what God wants you to do, or don't do what God wants you to do. It's a choice. Perhaps, a thought such as this may have been in the background of Apostle Paul's statement. When he said, I will do what God wants me to do. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 21, he then said, Because for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Throughout the psalm, King David the writer recognizes a relationship between himself and God. That closeness, that fellowship, and because of this, he has been given certain benefits by God. And is therefore obligated to render honor, to render service, to worship God. Now this relationship is so important that God is not yet ready for him to pass on to the other world. God was not ready for David to die. Because there are things that God wanted David to do. Because David acknowledges that God is his Lord, his Savior. Even in the midst of those trials and testings in his life. He has therefore rescued him from the very jaws of death. And thus has a claim on his life. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. This becomes... David, as a good friend of the Lord, God walks with him. 
He must not relax in his service to God. The highest concept of servant is not that of a hired worker, a hireling who works for wages, who works for gratification, but rather who works for the glory of the Lord, who ministers to the needs of his people without expecting any return, for he knows that God, the hands of God, the eyes of God have seen the things that we have done. In this case, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, the relationship of God likened into a friend to friend is the highest motivation of our effective service to him. This is the basis on which King David the psalmist said, I will offer to thee sacrifice of thanksgiving in verse 17. The psalmist also believed that if a friend is worth having, he is worth serving. Think about that in our relationship to God. If God gave us his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross, he ought to be worshipped. He ought to be honored. The Lord Jesus Christ said, when we honor him, we recognize him. In his statement in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, when we accept all that is involved in being a servant of the Lord, all other matters fits into place. It will just go hand in hand. As God deals with it. Number three and last. In our thankfulness, we need to be grateful for our commitment to the Lord. King David said, I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. The psalmist does not go into detail concerning the vows he had made to God. It is between him and God. The same thing happens to us when God listens to our prayers, when God answers those needs that we have. We talk to him and we made a deal with him. We made vows to him. And brothers and sisters in the Lord, I hope and pray that like King David, we will say, I will bow, I will, I will fulfill what I promised the Lord. Because sometimes the other way happens. Maybe David prayed in his crisis and promised that God, that if God would deliver him, he would change his life, his way of life in certain areas. In all probability, he had agreed with God that he was deficient in his bringing of sacrifices to the altar. But he changed that. He made more sacrifices to God. The Bible also teaches us the chief commitment to our, of our lives only should be given to God himself. Because God is the author. God is the creator. Ultimately, our Father in heaven will require of us more contribution. Not only part of our lives, but all of the commitments, total commitment, total devotion, complete devotion, and all that we are and all that we can be. God wants us to give that to him. This means that we must hold nothing back from him because he holds nothing back from us. When we get right with God, brothers and sisters in the Lord, when we give our lives to him, when we dedicate our minds to him, when we always say, Lord, I am here, do whatever you want, do whatever you please. When we make vows, we must keep them or we will be worse than ever before. A good example for this 
Jacob made a vow at Bethel. But as for we know, he stayed 20 years in Haran for Laban and seemingly ignored those vows. Sarah prayed to God to have a son. But then he disobeyed God. She disobeyed God and gave her servant to Abraham. And we know what happened. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, stewardship is an important part of living a life that is glorifying to the Lord. In fact, for us, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, for us who acknowledges that the God who saves us, that the God who sends the Lord Jesus Christ to us, actually reigns in our lives. It is probably the most important element, important thing that happened to us when we commit everything to the Lord. Let me close with this. On this Thanksgiving week, we must continue to express our gratitude to God throughout the whole course of our lives. And we should give thanks not only for one, two, three major things in our lives, but give thanks in everything. Physical, spiritual, emotional, blessings that we enjoyed every day. It is our duty in everything to give thanks unto God the Father, the Almighty God, as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father in Him, in whose name we are to offer up all our prayers, in whose name we offer up our praises, in whose name we offer up our spiritual services, that they may be acceptable to God. So I will encourage you, as you gather together as a family, as you, as you gather together as a church, brothers and sisters in the Lord, make God the center of the celebration. For gratitude is born in hearts that take time to count up the blessings. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and such a spirit leads one to give one's best to God in all areas of their lives as we prepare to celebrate remember God who gives us everything let us close in prayer our Heavenly Father we thank you so much for your word thank you so much for all the blessings that you poured into our lives and Lord make this day special for us Make this week special for us and for you as we enjoy the fellowship, the family, and the bounty from harvest. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, on this Thanksgiving day, may God's love continue to overflow into your lives. May the Lord Jesus Christ and His mercy be showered upon you. May the Holy Spirit be with you as you enjoy time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all.